So I was part of this uh, process here in uh, near, near the town of Nakuru in Kenya. We are working with the Okiek community. Uh, the Okiek are one of the original hunter-gatherer peoples of Kenya, uh, living in the Mao forest. The purpose of the exercise was to allow a section of the Okiek community to map out, using this three-dimensional model technique, uh, their traditional territory, their traditional land use patterns, and it was an exercise in memory, in uh, trying to help young people and the community understand their heritage and their history, which was both environmental and cultural. Uh, from my side, it was a tremendous experience. I learned a great deal. Uh, not, I mean, the methodology itself was very interesting, and, and, in, and to watch it unfold, uh, the process of the map building, the coding. Uh. For me, the most significant parts were the participatory aspects the uh, enthusiasm of the community to do this work, but in particular the cooperation between elders, both men and women, and young people, uh, meaning young adults, and then also uh, school-aged children. Uh, I've worked on a number of projects where we've looked at uh, intergenerational knowledge transmission, language transmission, knowledge transmission, uh, heritage transmission, and this was one of the most intense tools I've ever seen, where a lot of tacit knowledge, uh, knowledge that the elders hold, but sometimes don't even know that they hold, uh, that can easily be lost over time. This was the technique of the three dimensions uh, encouraged the elders to explain their environmental, natural and cultural knowledge in a, in a more thorough and complete way. So the evidence of this was when we started, we worked on the legend. The legend is the key for the coding of the map. And uh, a young uh, Okiek activist had been very involved in research. He felt fairly confident that he understood traditional Okiek concepts of the land, uh, the vegetation, the altitudes, the land use. And uh, he did, in fact. He was uh, very good at that. Uh, but as the three dimensions of the map evolved and the different clans and the elders came in, suddenly there were layers and layers more information. And the environmental knowledge was substantially more complex than we had thought of at the beginning. And you can uh, elicit that in other methods. There are ways to do it, to walk on the land, for instance. But to do that is a much slower process because you have to you know, go up the mountainside, double check information, try to get referencing. But here on the three dimensions, you could see the relationship between altitude, vegetation, landscapes, land use patterns all at once. And people could point and you can move across huge territories with your finger. Uh, and so the relationships of the knowledge systems, the relationships of the, of the environmental zones become more explicit and the whole thing comes together. And the young people were paying a great deal of attention. The elders were debating, dialoguing, extracting meaning. And also this interlinguistic process. We were working in Ogiek, uh, Kiswahili and English, and that allowed us to explore the meanings of each of these concepts. So rather than just a raw process of, of transferring Okiek terminology, uh, at each level we kept having to investigate that and, and understand what the meaning was. So from my side, uh, probably the most important uh, aspect was this sort of massive, intense transfer of traditional knowledge between generations. And I think if you, what the community said at the end of the process was, we learned so much. Uh, from the elders, it was a complete affirmation of their real lived experience. And from the younger generation, it was an awakening that the environment they were in is much more complex than they had understood, and that there were a lot of things that they will need to follow up with the elders to really understand in, a, in, a, in greater depths. But it's all mapped out for them, and they can go back to it at any point they want, and then investigate deeper into each of those meanings. So uh, partly, I just have to say congratulations to the community and to CTA and Aramis Africa for doing very good work in the preparation and the execution of the project.